Hi everyone, and welcome back to Bouncing Forward. My name is Miles, a student from the fall 2020 semester of MSG Classroom. Over the past few months, we got the opportunity to meet professionals in the sports and entertainment industry and learn how they bounce forward through adversity. Let me send it over to some of my amazing peers from the MSG Classroom program to introduce some of our amazing guests we have here today. Perfect pass, and Robinson throws it down. Peyton, pounded by Holly, fights over the screen. Randall, good luck for three. Knocks it down, Julius Randall. Hi, I'm Iceland. I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity to speak with and learn from athlete Alan Houston. Take a look at some of the questions we were able to ask. Whenever you're allowed when, uh, or you have the opportunity to, to get in front of people like this and to ask the right questions to get the access, you know, be prepared for the questions that you want to that you want to ask um, and, you know, try to ask them, you know, really questions about what the challenges that they face, what they learn, because everyone who's had some type of success will tell you they didn't have success by having success. They had success by learning from mistakes, you know, and, and, and so that's where you want to say it's not, it's not a failure. It's just something I got to learn from and pick up and put it in my notebook and say, now this is going to help me. And so experience, that's what experience is. I was playing, you know, we were on the road and uh, I missed two really big free throws at the end of the game. And I shot 86, 80, between 85 and 90 percent. So for me to miss two free throws, I felt like that is at least one of the things. When we talked about master our strengths, I felt like I was mastering that. But you're still going to have failure. The next night, the next night, I had the ball at the top of the key, end of the game, and I had a decision to make. I could have either, either shot, a, shot a jump shot or I could have gone to the basket and tried to go back and get to the free throw line so I could shoot two more free throws, remembering that I missed the last two the night before. I went to the free throw line, I went to the basket, and I didn't want to bail my defender out because I wanted that opportunity again, right, to, to put myself in that situation. So another thing you have to do is you have to be prepared, but you also have to attack, you know, and, and always be in an attack mode and don't run from challenges, it, embrace challenges because you're going to miss shots, but you want to be, I wanted to be known for someone who could be counted on. And I can only do that if you put yourself in those situations. So another piece of things that I always think is when Dan talks about writing things down, you know, write down, you know, who you want to become, write down what you want to look like and what you want to be. And then you have to start focusing on that. Here comes quickly with Knox. Knox the finish. Shot clock at three. Rivers puts up a three and Hi, I'm Kira, and I was really inspired by our next guest. She has been an Olympic athlete, New York Liberty alumni, and she's the first female assistant head coach in the NBA. Check out our discussion with the incredible Becky Hammond. Looking back at your career, what do you appreciate most about your journey, something that was pivotal to your success and that's helped you bounce forward? Okay, that is a wonderful question. Um, what I am appreciative the most of, well, well, one is an opportunity, first of all. I think at the end of the day, um, not being allowed an opportunity would be the most catastrophic thing, obviously, because none of us are sitting here if somebody didn't give us an opportunity, um, whether it be an opportunity to be an athlete, an opportunity to be a, a, a student. Some, somebody's always has going to give you an opportunity. So I think just the opportunity. But this might sound funny, but I'm actually probably most grateful for the hard times, the injuries, the losses, because during the hard times, that's when I had my most individual growth. It's easy to be great um, when everything's rolling and you're playing great and, and everything's kind of bouncing your way. Where you get the most growth is the uncomfortable spots, the, the things that you're not used to fighting through. You know, my first ACL injury, um, and it seems in the moment, it seems not fair. It seems uh, devastating at the moment. It, it, you have all these feelings of 
being defeated. And I think it's in the moments, it's in the ditches, it's in the, the valleys that we become our greatest because those are the things that build you and help you persevere um, to being great down the road. And I think if you go back and you look at history, whether it's, um, you know, Thomas Edison or the Wright brothers, how many failures did they have before they got it right? Um, Michael Jordan was cut from his high school team. That's a pivotal moment for him. Something we all look back off and kind of laugh off. But if that doesn't happen, does he become Michael Jordan? Right? So every part of your journey is instrumental in how you respond to being knocked down, to being disappointed, to being not picked. How you respond in those moments are the greater, uh, I would say, road marks and, and, deter and the determining factors of, of where you go in life. Ultimately, we all have choices in how we choose to respond um, to the hard stuff, the difficult stuff, the stuff that we cry about when no one's looking. Those are the stuffs that eventually will make you great and build something in you. Perseverance, resiliency, character, patience. Um, those are the things, those are the characteristics more than any jump shot that will help you uh, be successful in life. And I don't care what avenue you're going in. You get those things built in you and you're going to be on a good road. Not an easy road, but a good road. In our discussion with Becky Hammond, she taught us a great deal about leadership skills and what's expected when you're in charge of a group of people. She also taught us how to prioritize our goals when we have a lot on our plate. Hi, my name is Isabel Perez and I'm excited to introduce our next guest, Adriano Espia. He represents New York's 13th Congressional District, which is also known as Harlem. This congressman discussed his career and the importance of using our voices. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Giante. I was gonna ask you, were there any like hard obstacles you ever had to face um, to like, become who you are right now? All the time, all the time. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, if it's not difficult to get there, it, it may not be as rewarding, right? Because that's what builds the character in you to continue to move forward. So obstacles everywhere. As I said, I came here without speaking a word of English. So my early years in New York, had to sit in the back of the classroom for two years without knowing what was being said. Um, they took a grade from you back then, you know, so I came, I think it was in the fifth grade and then I got placed in the fourth grade. I never got it back. So I had to sort of like work against all of that and then go to college and, and then get involved in politics and, and public service first. Public service and politics is uh, somewhat different. Uh, and then once I got involved into the, the, the public uh, politics arena, it's a uh, you know, it's almost like a gladiator. You know? So I came from the outside, sort of like never in the inside lane, always came from the outside. Uh, so that made it, um, if you run track, you know that if you have the outside lane, you got to run a little longer, right? Uh, so um, it was tough, but uh, rewarding. In addition to getting the chance to meet with amazing celebrity guests, we also met with some incredible professionals here at MSG Networks. We got the chance to meet people like Brent Richard and Jackie Lyons from production. We also met with Eric Johnson from Client Relations, Karen Marotta, and Marlon Jackson from Marketing. My most memorable moment of MSG Classroom was meeting Jamal Lassane. He was empowering left the session feeling motivated to have a better life and to pursue hard after my goals. And above all, choosing to do the right thing every time. Hey, did you hear that? Nah, you probably didn't. You should probably listen more, like my man Marlon Jackson told me. He said to be an active listener, and I appreciate that advice the most I carried out with me throughout my whole life. Every speaker has left the mark. This opportunity has changed our lives and given us different perspectives on what our futures can be. I'm sure now that anything I put my mind to, I can accomplish, just as long as I keep bouncing forward.
We want to send a big thank you to everyone at MSU Networks, Garden of Dreams, Children's Aid, and a special thank you to our teacher, Ms. Angela Sharp, Dan, Stacey Ann, and Amani for making this all happen. We especially want to thank our guests, Alan Houston, Becky Hammond, and Congressman Adriano Espinet for encouraging us just to stay focused and giving us tips on how to bounce forward after a setback. We appreciate all of our guests for coming to spend time with us, and thank you for showing us how to bounce forward. From me, Sunia, Miles, Iceland, Kira, Giante, Itzel, Mike, Jacob, Colby, Carlos, and Nicole. This has been Bouncing Forward.